Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems. Hi, I'm Tom Gozi. Welcome to Hot and Cold. Well, you know, we're making progress. We, we, spring is coming so rapidly and there's so much going on, not the least of which it's bright in here. And it's bright in here for a reason, not because I'm here, but for something else we did in the building. You got to stay tuned to see what it was, though. Hmm. Well, like I say, we're making tremendous progress in this house. Not enough to suit me, but I'm getting a lot of time in. And the most important thing we've done is look at this. Oh, the ceiling is up. You saw the, the second floor ceiling a week or so ago. We've got the first floor ceiling up, and I love the look. I mean, this has just brightened the room up tremendously. We had to uh, shim and level and do a lot of stuff, and it's fairly level in here. Um, it certainly looks a lot better than it did, and it's much more level than it was when we started working on the project. Um, and we're pretty much done. We've got a little bit of, um, we've got a couple of pieces here I've left out because I, uh, I'm just afraid that I forgot some kind of wire somewhere. <laughs> so I uh, need like two pieces for here and a piece or two or three in the, in the kitchen as well. We'll show you that in a few minutes. Uh, but you can see we've just framed it all out with two by threes and two by fours and hung it off the old ceiling, and, uh, and that's pretty well done. In the process of doing this, <clears throat> we were working with a lower grade of, um, of V-match, and we have things, defects like this. That's a fairly major defect. We can't really work with that very well. This is even, this is a catastrophic defect. It's something you got to cut out. Something like this, a little uh, tear there is not too bad. When you put the tongue in, that kind of masks it, especially on the ceiling because you're not going like this, oh, I do, but you might not, uh, to find that. But we get into a defect like this here, which is, is uh, somewhat significant. And even with the tongue on there, there's still some area where it goes down in and is kind of visible. So we have to deal with hiding that. A lot of different ways to hide it, but I've come up with the Gozi routine, which has to do with caulk and foam. And, uh, and we showed you a little bit of that last week. I think it was last week or the week before. And what we've done, I'm looking for my, oh, there it is. Um, we, we foam the, uh, these were pretty big holes we had here. And we foamed them. And, uh, and I let the foam cure. I did this last weekend. And then I have a, a knife. This is a knife blade that, let me get it out of my back pocket here, like one of these cutters. You know, you snap off the little sections. Well, I've taken it out of the, the, um, uh, the knife itself, and uh, this is a great shot looking up my nose, aren't you? <laughs> but I take this and I use it to shave the foam. I just go around and shave it, and then if I'm at an edge like I am here, I can actually use this to, uh, to replicate the um, the tongue in the groove. The biggest problem of doing this is if you have bifocals or progressive lenses like I have, it's finding the right place. Then I'll, I can actually scrape it too and that clears up any foam that may be stuck adjacent. And then I've got something that at least is flat. Here's one over here. Let's do this one too. It's a very tactile operation is kind of fun to do. So, so we got it. So we now have something that at least is flush. There's a, the hole is filled, but it isn't exactly the right color and the foam is kind of porous. So I was going to use um, 
uh, wood putty. And I thought about it a little bit. I thought, you know, wood putty is kind of, um, when it's, it looks great, you sand it down and it's great for filling nail holes and stuff, but it's, um, it, it, it shrinks a little bit and uh, it can fall out over time, although I suspect it wouldn't here. But <clears throat> being as I do everything I do with caulking compound, I happen to have a tube of just almond colored caulk and I was just fooling around and I took some of the almond colored caulk and I smushed it around over the knot. I actually, where we had some bigger holes here, um, I filled the holes and I should have a rag which I didn't bring with me but I, I normally have a rag when I do this. Uh, but being I'm on, on TV, you probably never realize how much of a slob I really am. But and, and I just take that same blade I used to trim it, and I run it across. And you can see here, if I get a rig, I can actually clean that up a little bit. I'll use my thumb. Just go around the edge. Now I have a, a hole there that is kind of light, but sometimes knots can be variegated, they can be light, and I'll show you in the other room in a minute that, um, you know, I think that's acceptable. If I step back and look at that a bit, you know, if I'm walking around, I can, uh, I can live with that. If I don't like it, I can always touch it up with a, uh, with a little bit of stain or something, or I could use a different color than almond. Almond is certainly kind of light, but this pine is a very light wood, so it kind of blends in with, it, it, you know, if you're looking or you're sitting on a sofa or something in this room that isn't going to catch your eye because it's a fairly discreet area. <laughs> the only problem I have is you know we did all this down here with picking through the big pile of wood we had and then <clears throat> as I got to the end the stuff I had kind of called out because it had the holes and <laughs> got oh I could use this piece and I could foam it so I've concentrated all that down this end of the room but that's that's an okay thing that's not a not a terrible thing and uh, um, I think it will be discreet enough. There are wood, you can get wood colored um, caulks that are more close to uh, the color of the knot. These, uh, I showed you these knots last week I think. These live knots are you know more of a salmon color so um, we could use a caulk that matches that a little bit more, but I'm, I'm going with that and I'm sticking to it by gory. And we put a, a, little, a clear finish on there. It will deepen the color of this and I think everything will blend fairly well. If it doesn't, um, we'll change it because it's easy enough to deal with. And it's a nice way to not lose um, a lot of square footage or board footage of, of wood that would otherwise be an issue. The other thing I've been doing is I've taken these pieces as I've cut them and I've cut, you know, I've cut out defects like that and we notch, or we go around them for, uh, uh, for areas where we need small pieces. And where are those areas where we need the small pieces, you ask? Why, they're around the corner. Well, we're back and uh, what we're doing with these little pieces, I've got them scattered all over the place here, but we, um, that we decided to do this area here with the wainscoting. I could have sheetrocked it, but I hate to sheetrock if I don't have to. <coughs> Excuse me. If I have wainscoting, what the heck? I think we're going to go up the stairs with wainscoting as well. I'm not sure about that yet, but I think that's what's going to happen. In addition, the area we have here, let me hit the light for the, uh, where we go up the stairs. Remember where we notched out for where the bathtub is, so we have the headroom. We'll wainscoat this, or we'll use v center bead pine also. And I've whittled the back side of the, um, the tongue here just a little bit, you can see. And that will sit right here. And we'll go like so, and we'll come up here with, uh, with all pine. And that'll be the ceiling. There'll be no taping involved. And after all, isn't that a good thing? So I'm, really what I'm trying to do in addition to finish up the building is just get all this darn scrap wood out of the way. Um, <clears throat> we close this in here where the uh, landing is. We'll put moldings around the edges to, um, to hide all the, uh, the edges. And back here I've done some, 
Oh, we've got recessed lighting, if you hadn't noticed. This is, uh, these are compact fluorescent recessed lights, and uh, recessed lights have tremendous problems if you're putting them in a cathedral ceiling on a second floor where that ceiling is in between inside and outside. They tend to pump heat and warm moist air out of the room into the attic and create all kinds of condensation problems. Between first and second floor is obviously no issue. So we've got seven of these recessed lights in. There are 13 watts each, and when I put them in, finished putting, excuse me, finished putting them in last weekend, I thought, this may not be bright enough, I might have to add a few, and uh, came back and checked it out at night, and it, it's just perfect, very nice lighting. So we have a little bit left over here to do. We ran out of, of big pieces of good pine, so again, three or four pieces, and that's all closed in. Um, so we are making progress here. The, uh, we've got to bring some sheetrock down and get that going. Uh, there is, this is really, this area here, about one and a half pieces. The gap up top, actually we don't even have to close this in. We will, um, but we'll have a soffit here for the kitchen cabinets. There will be kitchen counter here with cabinets on this wall and over on this wall. So, and there will be a small soffit, but the rest of it also needs to be closed in up at the top. We don't have to necessarily tape behind the cabinets. Really, the only part of this wall that's going to show is right here. And you can see there is some joint compound here. We're not going to do any, any compounding or sealing of ever, anything else because it just <clears throat> it'll all be covered up, which is very nice. I think back to a year ago when we were just taking the cabinets out of this room. This wall was leaning back an inch and a half up off the floor, three feet. There was an inch and a half, two inch gap on the back here. We now have a wall that's relatively plumb and uh, it's all new and most importantly is extremely warm. The uh, comfort level in this house is so much higher than what we started out with and the heat runs very infrequently because uh, it's although it was spring a year ago as well, it's really a tremendous difference and all that money we spent and time we spent insulating is really starting to show the results now. So we're, we're getting there and, and this is going to start coming together more rapidly. Um, what else? There's uh, sheetrock that has to go on this wall here, which we'll be putting on very quickly. We're going to be putting a refrigerator here, a laundry sink here, a washer dryer here and uh, so there'll be more cabinets on this wall as well so we'll get a lot of storage in this very little house in this very petite kitchen. It'll be a very um, uh, hopefully well organized situation. We've got a big project I've done upstairs so why don't I, I, I you know talk about wainscoting there's more wainscoting upstairs too in the bathroom and it has a nautical theme let's go look at that. Well, we're back in the bathroom because there's a lot of detail in this room and, and we're, we're finishing up some of these details. One problem we're having is we have ladybugs everywhere in this house. And once it gets warm in the house, either because we've turned up the heat or it's a sunny day and we've got a lot of solar flux coming into the building, the ladybugs come out. So apparently when the house was all opened up, you know, when the windows were missing last autumn, ladybugs came in and laid eggs, as did the cluster flies and we're dealing with getting rid of them now and uh, it's hundreds of thousands of critters that we're vacuuming up and believe it or not we just did this right before we started the tape and there's there's more kicking around here. Um, <clears throat> in the process of trying to get the mitigate the the bug problem which happens in all new houses I, I got some trim up around here and I foamed some more which I'll trim this down I thought maybe they were coming in some cracks around here Obviously, they're not because they're still here, but, you know, we'll keep trying. And sooner or later, uh, they'll be gone. Um, either they'll die or the, uh, we'll have vacuumed them all up. But it is, it can be almost like a Stephen King nightmare scenario. I opened one of the windows, um, the other side, and there was hundreds of flies up in and on the top of the window. It was just delightful. Uh, but they're called cluster flies. They're very common and uh, they get in cracks in old buildings and we had this building all torn apart so we're now paying the price for tightening the building up and trapping them all inside just disposing of them. Getting to the more pleasant matters we've got the uh, 
We've got the tub faucet in. This is a faucet I ordered on eBay and uh, was looking around for something that would be a deck mount faucet because we have a deck here and we had a mount in through the top. And this is kind of what we wanted. Uh, we can't put a shower in here, so we have a handheld, I don't know what we call it, shower washer or something. And uh, kind of a slick faucet. It's a Chinese faucet, very nice castings. It's got ceramic um, uh, innards, and it also has this uh, little lever here. And it all works extremely well. So this can, nice flexible, I don't know what the longevity of this thing is, of this, uh, this wand part, but We'll find out. We can swap this around either way. You know, it could be pointing in either direction. Um, we have to... Um, I've been dealing with issues related to plumbing this because the way I frame this up, you can see it on the end here. We have a two by three. We have the uh, gypsonite underneath here. And then we have the, uh, the uh, tile on top. And the stem that comes out of the bottom of the faucet is only so long. And by the time we anchor it, uh, there wasn't enough room for the plumbing connections, which if I trade places, we can get a picture of. And you can see it, it, it was a pretty snug fit, and I whittled back as much as I dared, and uh, we just made it. It seems like it's working okay. Uh, I'm babysitting it for the next few days here to make sure all the fittings are nice and tight. Uh, but it was, it was a bit nip and tuck there. So... So that's all done. We're getting ready just about now to do some grouting uh, and get some trim up here. And we're going to trade places again because we have a little bit more to look at at the other end of the bathroom. Well, I spent a lot of time on this end of the bathroom as well. For such a small room, there's a lot of things to do, as I say. Uh, we replaced the door. And one of the reasons we replaced the door is because we um, needed to have a door that closed properly. So we've got a, a pine door here. And I just realized we can't close it. We can close the door. I had the wire for the light in the way. Um, now we have a door with a regular lock set. Before there was a hook on here, but we've got a regular lock set. And uh, the you can see here the the door opening is not square. And I kind of overcut it a little bit, but it works. We won't look at that too much. Um, we we like to try to keep this reveal somewhat uniform. And it was really kind of dodgy where. There's two things going on. The, the door opening is a certain size, but the edges of the door opening go like this. So we, we're kind of wider in the back here than we are on the, on the other end, but it all works and it all is pretty attractive. And we have a door we can lock now, which is a good thing. If you're in the bathroom, you're taking a bath or something, you'd like to have some privacy. The other thing I did was back here, we, uh, when I built the hallway back again, I clipped this corner. This used to be a square corner. I clipped it so we had a little bit more room coming up the stairs. That meant that when we went to put um, uh, draw, uh, uh, the wainscoting up, we needed to come around the corner, being basically a lazy person who likes to try to do funny looking things. <laughs> um, I didn't cut the piece of uh, pine here at the corner and put two pieces together. I kind of bridged the corner. You can see it from the top here. Pretty much, uh, I should have cut it about here, and I didn't. I just kind of bridged it and kind of approximated the corners. And, and just so, what that did was it left me with a corner with a lot of, uh, uh, this area with a lot of pieces. I'm trying to get in a place where we can see. You get over there, I'll get over here. There we go. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, five bends as we go around the corner. What's fun about that is it looks kind of like, to me, like the kind of woodwork you would see in a boat where you use every space to its maximum. It was just something, I was being lazy cutting it and it might have been easier to do it the other way, but I did it this way and I'm happy with the results. We'll clean this up a little bit, get some urethane on it, and it's really gonna look pretty snazzy. You know what? Here on the second floor, there is one more thing related to the bathroom that you need to see. And this is probably worth putting up with the whole show just to see what's next. So stay with us. We'll be right back. We're back. And the other piece of the bathroom, 
is the vanity. And you remember we did the vanity a couple weeks ago at the Rockland Home Depot. We've got a Mills Pride vanity. We need to get a countertop. And I wanted to do something different. I didn't like a lot of the stock countertops. They weren't bad, but I didn't think it fit with this room. And this, look what we did. We made a countertop. And we made a countertop out of the floor tile, but we've done a couple of things that are a little bit different and something I've wanted to do for years and I finally got up the nerve to do it. We took two pieces of tile and we epoxied them together. You can see a little bit on the back here, the epoxy coming through. And I always wondered if that would work. And I think it works fairly well. What we have is these tile are $3 a square foot. And if you've ever priced out any kind of countertop, it's twenty to hundred to two hundred dollars a running foot. So they're usually two feet wide, you know, with an edge. And and yeah, they're nice and they're beautiful and, and they're kind of cool. But I have a hard time spending that amount of money. And I know as a do-it-yourselfer, I can't manipulate that kind of material because it's heavy. I'm not that strong. And it, it's a big piece of stuff. So this is, was appealing to me, and I did something like this years ago, but I used an acrylic caulk in between. I actually left a grout line, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, and I filled it with clear acrylic caulk. And it kind of worked okay, but I wasn't thrilled with the concept. So I tried it with the epoxy, and I found that's pretty strong. And the, there's, there's an issue here with these tiles, and that is there's an edge here that is chamfered. What that means is it's just a little bit of a bevel on the edge. And when you put two pieces together, you can see on this, the first one I did, I used a gray epoxy instead of clear. And you can actually see how wide the gap is in between where the two beveled edges come together. So the gray was a mistake, but it was a good way to, you know, good thing just to try out. So by using a clear epoxy, the, 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 um, the cut edge comes, you can see it up through the clear epoxy. And, and if you're back a ways and you're looking at it at an angle like that, you can hardly see that joint. So I thought it was pretty good. I talked to Chris Hayden from CW Hayden about adhesives and if it would work or not. And it, he thought it would. I thought it would. So this is what we did. It's not hard to do. You do need to have a tile saw if you're using granite. Um, I hate grout lines, okay? I absolutely hate them because they're places where dirt's going to get, critters are going to live and I just don't like the look. Maybe on a wall it's okay, but on a surface, especially on a food preparation surface, if this was in a kitchen, and we are going to do this in the kitchen, it would be an issue. So what we did was just, I, I have a substrate which is um, three quarter inch particle board, and I've got some pieces of two by three, I actually have four of them, one here, one here, one here, one here, screwed in and glued just to make this nice and flat because you can't have any bounce uh, when you have a stone, ba uh, a stone countertop, whether it's this or anything. Um, and I then took full pieces, which are in the front here. I've got two full pieces. These pieces are cut because the vanity is not 24 inches wide the way a kitchen counter is. So the vanity um, got cut down a bit. And then, of course, the issue is you need to set in a sink. And we can't do an undermount sink because of the... Um, we're, we're not... We are not I at least, and not that talented in terms of cutting. So it was, we, don't, we don't get a real clean cut here, but I found this really nice Kohler sink at Home Depot that I think just tra uh, replicates what the cabinet looks like. And it just drops in. I'm going to take it out for a minute so we can look at what is underneath. And I had already, you know, it comes with a template. I cut the template opening, and then you can see the particle board here. And then I cut the tile, and I only came in this far, and it, uh, the template had a curved edge here. We just cut this far, and then I just push a little bit, and it cracks here and approximates that curved edge. Pretty clean stuff. Um, so we put all the pieces together like a jigsaw puzzle, used a five-minute epoxy, which it's a little cooler in here. It's about 63 degrees, so I had about 15 minutes of play time. And then I take a scraper. When the epoxy cures, I take a scraper like you use for taking um, the uh, uh, something off a windshield or something, and I just scrape the edge, and I can get it. It's harder than this, but I scrape off all the excess epoxy, and then I can sand this down with an aluminum oxide sandpaper, or perhaps even buff it with a uh, car polishing compound. 
just to clean up that joint a little bit more. The, how is this fixed to the substrate? We use clear silicone caulk, take a putty knife, and just it's kind of like a mortar, very thin layer. We're not putting big gobs of it. We're, making, we're putting it out in gobs. Then we're taking a putty knife and knocking it flat. So it's just a very thin layer. Set it right in, glue the joint together. So we did like these two pieces. Then we did these two pieces. Same thing here. We did this edge, then this edge, and then right in the middle, because this was a little odd, we had to put a little key piece, if you will, about three quarters of an inch wide in the front and the back. And that pretty much was it. That's, that's almost all of it, except we had an edge. And the edge originally I was going to do in wood, and could do it in wood if I wanted to. But I thought, well, we want to try, play this concept out a little further. So I did this this morning, and it's not all cured yet, and it's not cleaned up. We just used a clear silicone caulk. I cut little three-quarter inch strips here to hide the particle board. Clear silicone caulk, and I clamped it. Actually, I clamped it in place with duct tape, and I did put some clamps on it, which were kind of extraneous. And I'll clean that up a little more. I'm going to let the silicone really needs to dry for 24 hours. We're pretty much um, ready to go. Are we out of time? The show's over? Well, there's more to see on this, and we'll, as we finish it up, you'll see more. If you have any questions, give us a call on the radio. I think this is just a fun concept, very inexpensive. I love the look. I love the look of granite, and this is granite on a, on a, on a generic budget. It was, there's $25 worth of tile here. Can you beat that? What a country. See you next week. Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems.